Thank you so much. And welcome everybody to session three of the Spotlight on Spotlight Community Summit. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, for anybody new that may be joining us or as a friendly reminder to those who've been here before, um, you will see we have um, borrowed from the DLF code of conduct for, uh, for the duration of this summit. Um, and you can see there that we as ascribe to that co those code of conduct principles and we fully support their guidelines for respectful and inclusive participation. And we ask that we all abide by these standards during our time together. If you have concerns, please let me or Vanessa know if you would. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who haven't yet, please list your institution followed by the all the names of, of the folks from your institution who are attending. That would be great. And for anybody new, if you haven't um, introduced yourself in the pre-meeting intros document, there's a link there for you to do so. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank everybody for their participation thus far. And um, we're just really excited uh, to have you all back and um, conclude the summit and then sort of go off to some new next steps and, and see, where, see where we end up. Um, I want to thank um, my, my, by the way, we do not have a note taker for this session by design. That is because the agenda is um, very detailed and robust, and we don't really feel that we're going to need one. Um, Vanessa and I will go back and take a look at the recording, and if there's anything significant that was missed, we'll make sure that we add it into the notes. Um, maybe uh, there, might, there might be something significant that bubbles up during the breakout uh, session uh, report outs, so we'll see how that goes. So everybody can relax about that. Um, and yeah, and so, I, yeah, I really want to thank Vanessa. I want to thank everybody. I've been communicating with uh, another colleague at Harvard outside of this summit, with my colleagues at Stanford, with um, my, my um, library leadership to try and rally support for participation in this community, renewed participation. And I just want to thank each and every one of those folks um, so much for that for that input and Vanessa for her fabulous collaboration. So I think what we wanted to um, kick this off with is some brief reflections and discussion on what makes um, a successful open source community. And one of the things that Vanessa and I realized as we were trying to shape Summit three is um, it, at least in our respective cases, and I'll and I'll speak speak also personally for Stanford. We we have philosophical buy in from management. Open source communities are important. We help to create um, a lot of these products. These these code we work on these code bases. We need to be participating. We need to be helping. Um, helping to lead with our other colleagues. But then when the cold hard reality hits of the fact that resources are needed, that's harder. That's harder for people to come through and say, yes, I'm willing to commit a developer or two developers for X amount of time. And so we kind of talked through that and you'll you'll see when I described the group breakouts, we landed on sort of launching into a pilot after this. And I'll I'll say more I'll say more about that. But that's a direct result of how hard it is to get that man management and leadership resource commitment, not the buy-in, but the resource commitment. And I bet you all may have a similar similar situations, and I hope we have a little bit of time for discussion here about that. Um, I know some of the, we know some of the other things that make open source communities successful are distributed work with many active participants, commonly shared goals, 
um, a willingness to set goals and to compromise. And um, I have a book recommendation there, The Art of Community by Joan O'Bacon, which is really great. Um, many of you that may be available in your um, uh, at your own at your own library, but um, I recommend taking a look at that if you have the time or the interest to do so. So now we have just a few minutes. Um, I'm I'll, I'm happy to call. Uh, we're happy to call on people. Um, do do people have comments or ideas about successful open source communities that they want to share or questions to ask? Does does the does my resource allocation sort of assertion does that resonate with anybody else here? Yeah, that um, resonates. I mean, I've, in the past, I've been involved in the Folio community and the Koali community, and you know, open source or community source, and uh, yeah, resources and the pull between um, having the resources work on local projects and then. Uh, you know, convincing senior management that they should also contribute to community work like this that redounds to everybody's benefit. Yeah, so I definitely identify with that challenge. Yeah, um, I, I I have no doubt it's probably pretty pretty common. Um, anybody else? Any other sort of reflections or comments that anyone would like to share? Sounds like no. I'm going to take that as maybe no disagreement, <laughs> or else, or else some people are still waking up. So um, I'm I'm happy to move on because we have a lot to do here today. Did anybody else wanna wanna um, make another comment or ask a question about open source communities? Nope. Okay. That's fine. So um, let's uh, transition into a description of the groups, uh, these working groups and how the group breakouts are going to work. So um, we decided again, after much backing and forthing and looking at um, this great work that Vanessa did, Hopefully you all have seen this. Uh, Vanessa posted this, uh, a link to this document or this, this bar graph in, uh, in the Code for Life channel. Um, you can see how the votes came out. You can look at the details tab and that's where um, we list the votes for the top three goals by, uh, by institution. And because there were a number of things that only garnered one vote, the, those that only garnered one vote are only available here. They're not shown in the bar graph, but you can definitely see here that accessibility won out, followed by sustainability, and then documentation and de deployment for actual topics here. Um, we do have an asterisk here um, because some of the some of the things on here, um, in particular, perhaps under enhancements. Um, definitely would benefit from further discussion for what should be included in Spotlight Core. And uh, so we actually used this as a basis to, to uh, come up with the three working groups. And I'll go back to the agenda. So those three working groups are accessibility, sustainability, which also includes GitHub cleanup and PR handling, and then documentation, which also includes deployment here. So these working groups are for the breakout sessions that we'll be having, and they're intended to persist outside of the summit on a trial basis for three months. So this trial allows for broad participation by everybody, yet it ensures a limited time commitment. 
we're we're doing that for you all and for your managers um at this time because we we sort of we we need to see what happens and what what um what the level of commitment um is even for the first three months so here's here's what we are recommending we're recommending that each group outside of the summit today of course that you all plan to meet three times between now and the 13th of June. So that's a that's a three plus month time period, right? And on the 13th of June, we'll check in, we'll hear your report outs, and we'll decide if, if we're going to continue with one working group, two working groups, or all three, or some other, um, or we'll head in some other direction. So, working group side, what I'm calling side work outside of the recommended three meetings will have to be determined, we're acknowledging by individual availability and institutional support. So, that's not going to necessarily be the same for everybody, right? Um, here's, here's a really important short set of deliverables for the 13th of June meeting. I know um, maybe for people who really like to roll up their sleeves and just kind of get in and, and get the work done, totally understand that. If if But I can't impress upon everybody enough how important it is to do, to do a little bit of goal setting and estimation because if we want to have that management buy-in to continue to participate on and build, build this community, they have to have that kind of information. And so um, that's why we're recommending that um, each working group develops a list of prioritized goals. Obviously that can be changed as, you know, doesn't have to be a thing that's set in stone, right? But your, your best, um, you know, best guesses on that. Um, also, we recommend an estimate of what, what a working group could accomplish in a year. And this might be stated as a minimum uh, slash maximum. That can kind of be described however you would like. But again, think about um, you are making a pitch to management that this work matters and your participation matters. Also, an estimate of how many people in hours per month um, is recommended to maintain the group after June, if desired. Again, just your, your best, um, best estimate on that. Um, that said, working groups should feel free to, to also start working on tasks as, as, as time allows. So that's our, that's our recommendation for, for the working groups. Um, there's gonna be time for questions at the end. I'm almost done, just a few more bullets to get through. Um, the intention is for the working groups to be self-governing and for the, work, the working group meeting schedule to be determined by each group, um, which we would ask you to decide outside of this summit because everybody will be um, exchanging contact information. We also wanted to make sure that we acknowledge that today you might be uncertain if you are available to participate in the working group pilot, you know, outside of this meeting, that's okay. Um, we value your ideas for the breakouts. If anyone is interested in participating in more than one working group, <laughs> that would certainly be welcomed. And um, again, we will set up and facilitate a community check-in on the 13th of June for all of the working groups. That'll be a forum for the groups to report on goals and have discussion. Who has questions uh, about how this is going to work? I, I have a just a quick one. I'm assuming like once we sign up, you'll email that group with everyone's email so we can start our self-governing process and everything. No, is... we we set up a we set up folders for you. So you are you are going to in in a shared directory that everybody has edit access to. So you're going to be sharing your information um, on that document, and you'll be able to do that yourself. 
Great, thank you. You're very welcome. Anybody else? Questions about how this is gonna work? Wow, we are barreling along this morning. Vanessa, I think we're gonna be able to give people longer than 15 minutes. Yeah, in breakout rooms, yeah. Which, yeah, which would be wonderful. Why don't we give people 20 minutes instead of 15? What do you think? That sounds great. Yeah, and um, yeah, and Kathy, go ahead and keep on sharing your screen here. I think it's probably just easier, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, if, if no one else has any other questions, I'm going to turn it over to Vanessa for some breakout room mechanics, and then um, we'll have 20 minutes in the breakout rooms. Go ahead, Vanessa. All right, great, thanks. So yeah, the way that this will work is I set up three break, breakout rooms, one for accessibility, one for documentation and deployment, and another for sustainability, GitHub cleanup, and PR handling. Um, they're going to be, they're just open, and so you can go into whatever room that you would like. You could even move between rooms if you want, um, but you know, probably best to kind of stick with one. Um, and then um, Kathy and I are also going to each join one. I think Kathy's going to join accessibility and I'm going to join um, sustainability. But if you have any questions, um, if the documentation and deployment folks, if you get stuck having questions, there should be like an ask for help. Um, is like a little icon in your nav that you can reach out and I think I think I should ping me and it'll take me into your group um, um so yeah definitely let us know if you get have any get stuck or have any questions but basically the idea is we'll all go into our groups we'll now give you 20 minutes introduce yourselves um select a spokesperson to report out just for this meeting and here I think we're kind of thinking just start brainstorming about, you know, what are you excited? What were, even if you're not sure you can commit to this working group, what are the things that you think this group would be really um, great for them to focus on? And, you know, what, what excites you about this topic? And then maybe that can start to inform like formal goals for the group. Um, and so, yeah, any, any sort of ideas you have, we're, we're just really cur curious to know where that those groups could go. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I think you know, I see lots of cursors on those folder links. If you click on each of the folders, there you'll find two documents. One is a roster where um, y'all can just write your contact info so that we know who, um, you know, who, it, it, it's not even just members, like you're, feel free to put your name in um, more than one group, even if you're just interested in communications so that that will kind of be the place where people can go to know who the contacts are for that group and just be on sort of the, um, the mailing list communication. Um, and then in the other document you'll find in that folder is just a goals doc to just kind of start drafting, drafting um, yeah, goals that the group wants to accomplish. Any questions on how breakout rooms will work? And again, you're not, by joining a breakout room, you're not committing to anything. Um, this is just, you know, just idea, generating ideas and, and getting to know folks at this point. Any questions? And you're going to give people 20, we're giving people 20 minutes. You're going to try and remember and, and, um, send a reminder at five that there's five minutes left and then mm -hmm. you will get the 60 second warning that the breakout rooms are closing. So yes. anybody who also wants to set their own timer, um, maybe it's not a bad idea too. And, uh, and then we'll, um, we'll gather for report outs and wrap up. All right. If there aren't any questions, I'm going to go ahead and open up the breakout rooms. I see 22 past the hour. So why don't we say we'll join back at 43 past the hour. So, and I'll try to remember, I'm going to actually 
pause the recording. Um, Right, so did you want to start with the um, breakout report outs? Yes, yes, sorry, I'm just trying to find the agenda again, yeah. Yeah, let me, let me, um, okay. I'll share the screen, there you go. Yes, yeah, um, let's, um, yeah, let's start going alphabetical order. Should we start with accessibility? And then um, a reminder that each person, each group should take uh, um, three minutes, please. Okay, I'm the, the reporter for um, accessibility. Ready? Can I go? <laughs> okay. Um, so we had a really good uh, you know, wide ranging discussion about accessibility goals and uh, kind of the status of our various institutions. Uh, we talked about the types of standards that we need to be compliant with uh, for WCAG or WCAG, depending on how it's pronounced. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, it won't, we won't get it perfect, um, but it's, it's something we have to do. Um, and then there was a good question about, are we talking about accessibility for exhibit creators um, as well as the public? And we decided it was mostly about the users and about the public. Um, or yeah, prioritize public first and then the creators uh, and the exhibitors second. Then we talked about accessibility audits um, and the tools that we're using. So uh, many of us are using Site Improve and Wave. They're a great place to start, uh, but they don't tell the whole story. You need humans uh, to uh, review things like color contrast and keyboard navigation and, and, and use a screen reader, you know, to verify things. Um, and has anyone audited a, a generic spotlight instance? Harvard has, and there's a link to that in our notes. Um, and Stanford had a full accessibility audit done in their instance. Um, and then we talked about, you know, one of the goals would be to, to define the pain points. Where would we want to um, focus our attention first if we work on this or when we work on this? Alt text uh, came, to, came to the top. Uh, heading structure and semantic HTML. Uh, link markdown. Um, focus on the structure, color contrast, and then the keyboard navigability. Anyone else from the group want to add anything? Okay, that's accessibility. Great, thank you. And documentation and deployment? That's us. Um, so we took notes and have our goals and you can look at them in the sheet, but the goals in order um, were having basic documentation for starting up Spotlight. Um, so an easier way to actually deploy this. Uh, someone had noted that some of the documentation that they have found is not actually correct for spinning up. Um, and it would be nice to have screenshots or some sort of examples for seeing what just a basic vanilla spotlight looks like, since many institutions have already built up theirs. So it's hard to tell if you're seeing what you should be seeing um, and deciding on a home for that documentation. Uh, then we wanted to define mechanisms for ensuring documentation is correct. So again, actually keeping it up to date, ensuring that it works, perhaps would be trying it out as part of the working group, um, just reviewing it, but making sure that it's correct um, so that it doesn't prove as a barrier to entry to folks. Uh, review other similar open source communities to get ideas of how to build out documentation. Uh, Blacklight 8 has upgrade documentation and community core updates. GeoBlacklight's another one that's got a lot of community and deployment documentation practices that we could look at. Um, we could review local documentation that may exist at our institutions. So making sure our stuff is compatible with the latest for Spotlight, but also seeing about things you could contribute back, um, you know, tips and tricks you might have found. Uh, make suggestions for documentation standards for PRs so that if code, if code that goes in or something about the deployment changes encourage or require ideally documentation for those changes as well so that we don't get into a situation where things are broken because the directions are wrong. Um, another thing is to possibly explore other non-exhibit uses. A, a lot of folks are using this for exhibits, but folks might be using, have come up with sort of custom use cases for this that it might be good to document um, and review if we need any documentation to support those use cases. Uh, and finally, exploring ways of sharing information about institutional work 
on Spotlight without necessarily having to make some sort of public list. Um, I know we kind of have the Slack channels, so things like that. But since there tends to be overlap, it would be nice to sort of know what folks are doing. Great, thank you so much. Sustainability. Yeah, okay, so sustainability. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about what sustainability actually means in this context. And I think one of our goals going forward for this group is definitely gonna be digging into some of these issues. So we, we brought up things like um, you know, govern, governance, community resources, um, what can we do for institutional buy-in? Um, but the more concrete things we were talking about, it's clear that we need to do um, a, a round of, of assessing like what we have, what what technical debt we have, what are the regular maintenance obligations? Can we get um, you know more people on those? Can we uh, uh, have some sort of um, you know routinized communication system around some of these tasks so that people know what we're doing? Um, yeah, clearly uh, uh, making sure that we have um, a solid set of, of people regularly looking at PRs, like some of that stuff, just to, you know, um, give the impression of, of activity. Like we, if you want to get buy-in, you've got to, you know, have, have prompt uh, communication, make people feel good. Um, and I think uh, it didn't make it on the list, but I, I think there was at the very end, we were discussing, um, there's a decent possibility that we'll have crossover with the documentation and deployment group at some point. Um, and, and so a, a goal here would be to sort of figure out where those lines are and see if there's any coordination necessary with them. That's great. Oh my gosh, everyone did such great thinking. This is amazing to see. Um, I feel like we're like already off to such a good start. Um, yeah, I think maybe we've got a couple minutes if folks have like general questions or um, or specific questions about, yeah, where to go forward next. I am really curious about the institutional buy-in, if I may, since we have a couple of questions. And um I, you know, pe people people may not feel comfortable commenting, and, and if that's the case, it's totally, it's totally okay here. Um, but I'm curious whether whether the, the people attending today, do you do you feel that if you're interested in in actually doing some working group work, um, do you have the um do you have the um sort of the permission or the structure to do so do you have the license to do so or or is this something that um people are still lobbying um lobbying management for i know at harvard it's one of these out for us um for um um, communities from things and um, yeah, I'm getting buy-in for accessibility. Um, yeah, that's what. Okay, well, well, I hope I hope that you all, um, the fact that you all are here, um, that it's testament to um, at least a measure of buy-in. So it's good good to see folks. And I see in the chat, Cornell and Durham both have support, which is so wonderful to see. That's really good. Thank you, everybody, for, for letting us know. Because without knowing that, um, Vanessa and I have been operating partially in the dark for planning. That's um, that's one of the reasons why we we decided to go ahead with this pilot approach, right? we're not really sure um, about the extent of, of the uptake. So. so thank you, everybody. And Vanessa, I think it's over to you for the wrap up. All right.
So, yeah, so we just wanted to remind everyone Spotlight Development Channel on the Code for Lib uh, Slack space is where we'd like to keep the main um, communication going so we're not just posting everything everywhere. So please um, use that um, for anything and everything, um, as well as um, it, general updates that you want to give about how your work day, working groups are going. Um, Kathy and I are always here to answer any questions, blockers. Um, please reach out to us. We want to help facilitate in any way we can. Um, but as we've said, these working groups are really self-governing and we want you all to work with however makes sense for your schedules um, and, you know, to work work that out together um, within the groups. Um, and then Kathy and I wanted to just sort of have a check-in on March 12th. That's about not quite two weeks from today, but just reach out. We'll probably reach out on that Slack channel and just see how things are going. Um, again, making sure there's people aren't stuck or having problems, but um but then yeah, otherwise we are um oh yes we have our our next uh community meeting um is scheduled for june 13th but before that we wanted to uh, mention that in may 13th through 16th the code for lib um conference so that might be a good opportunity for folks to connect in person if um people are planning on going to that so just kind of wanted to get that on people's calendars and, um, but yeah, as I mentioned, so June 13th is when we're planning the, the next um, a meeting of us all coming together and where we want to hear how it went the past three months or three plus months of y'all's working groups, what went well, what didn't work well, and, you know, how, how you want to move forward from, from there. So, um yeah, I think that's all we have. Um, yeah, let us know. You know, if we, if you have any questions, we'll and we'll be in touch. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you again, everybody, for coming today. We really appreciate um, folks showing up, and um, and those of you who are willing to roll up your sleeves. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was really great to see all the brainstorming. I apologize we got stuck in the breakout rooms for too long because I got too wrapped up in our conversation, but I think um, that's that's all good, right? And then we still ended on time, so we've got two minutes to spare, so I guess, yeah. All right. Have a good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to start stop the recording. Um, we 